before we begin our giraffe chat this morning, I always like to take this opportunity to kind of explain what's going to be happening and why we have this beautiful orange barrier in front of you. So this is hopefully going to be a little bit of a giraffe training for you guys. And that's because our giraffe training, just like all of our animal training here, is completely optional for our animals. They have the choice to come over and do some training. If they don't want to train, they have the option to leave. Both of these gates will remain open at all times. That means if our giraffe don't want to go, if they want to leave, they are more than welcome to go. The only time we ever close these gates is if our ostrich come up. Our ostrich are so impressed with our giraffe training, they actually want to join in. <laughs> so this is a giraffe chat, and we have not got the heart to tell the ostrich that they're just not welcome over here. So that's the only time we'll close these, get, close these gates. So as our keepers are training, they're going to have their backs to you at all times. Hence this beautiful orange barrier. That's right. Not only is it here to make my beard look fantastic, it is also here for your guys' safety. Our keepers will not be paying attention to you as they are basically facing the other way. So I am going to ask you guys to not lean into the barrier, not stick your arms through it, not stick your legs through it, your wings, your tails, your talons, anything like that. This way you guys remain safe, we remain safe, and of course, most importantly of all, we don't fill out paperwork at the end of the day. <laughs> that way we all remain safe, and we're all happy, especially at this time of year. So it's looking like we are at the right time. We are all ready. Are you guys all ready? Yes. Yeah. That was almost enthusiastic. <laughs> yes. All right. With that, we cannot start off a good chat without saying good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you all hear me clearly on the microphone? As I try not to eat it. All right. Well, first things first, introductions. My name is Kieran. I am one of our animal care team members here at the Living Desert. And today I am not only joined by our beautiful giraffe tower behind us, I'm also joined by the equally beautiful and equally wonderful Whitney and Nick. They are part of our giraffe care team and have been working with our giraffe for many years to bring you this fantastic opportunity to see these guys, not only up close, but to also find out a little bit about how we take care of these beautiful animals. So some of you guys might have caught on earlier, I said giraffe tower, and that is because a group of giraffe is known as a tower, which I think is quite fitting, especially when these guys can get anywhere from 18 feet to 20 feet in height. Not only that, they can weigh well into the excess of 2,000s of pounds, but also we have quite a wide range of ages in our giraffe group as well. Our youngest member is seven months old. Everyone say, ah. Oh. Uh, Thank you. Right on cue. Yes, our youngest member is seven months old. Her name is Vicky Lou, or if you're British like myself and prefer proper title, Victoria Louise of the House of Giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> now, Vicky Lou is not only a beautiful and fantastic baby in our giraffe herd, she's also one of our special babies. That's the reason what makes her special is she is the 10th giraffe baby born here at the Living Desert which is not only a fantastic achievement of our current giraffe team, but also our giraffe teams of past as well. Now, of course, our oldest one has to be mentioned, that is the DC, as she is 18 years of age, which is a very healthy age for a giraffe. And believe it or not, she is the mother of our seven month old giraffe. Mm. Yes, she is quite literally the mother of all giraffe here at the Living Desert. She has had eight of her 10th babies here at the Living Desert. So it's a great testament to our giraffe training program. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm one of those keepers that likes to ask you guys silly questions. One, because you're all so enthusiastic to be here. Why not harness that enthusiasm for conservation as well? And two, it's a cool Chris Tuesday morning. I like to make sure you guys are paying attention. First silly question of the day, ladies and gentlemen, what year are we in right now? Don't all rush at once. 2019. We're close to 2020, so I'll give you that, that one for you guys. The reason I ask that silly question is... Since the late 80s, when I was born, we have lost almost 50% of the giraffe population. How does that make you guys feel? Pretty sad, pretty horrified. And unfortunately, man has played a massive part of that. You dropped the ball, Nick. I know. You have no idea how long I've waited to say that. But yes, we have, wait we have waited quite some time for Nick to drop the ball quite like that. But not only that, S Man has played a massive part in that 50% decline of giraffe in 30 years. Habitat loss, poaching, and even, believe it or not, poaching not just for their beautiful pelts, but for their beautiful meat on the inside as well, which is incredibly illegal to hunt. 
But unfortunately, Good. the price is too tempting for a lot of Good. these people. So here in the Living Desert, not only are we part of that successful breeding program, we are also part of trying to get that message out there. And we want to show you a little bit by doing some training. Now, right now, you'll notice that Nick is using that very sophisticated piece of equipment to work our giraffe right now. Yes, the tennis ball on his stick is called our target pole. In essence, it works quite simple. You'll notice Nick holds it up, our giraffe puts their nose on it, and in return, they get a nice tasty treat for doing so. That is called a target, and it helps focus our giraffe for training. You'll notice that they have stuck around, and you'll also notice that Nick moves. Our giraffe is that focused on the tennis ball, it is following Nick. Now this mystical magic is not anything fantastic, it is called positive reinforcement. If I were to offer you guys a small piece of candy, and all you had to do was stick your nose on the end of a tennis ball to receive said candy, some of you are already laughing because you know you do it. That is how positive reinforcement works. It's a very small action for a big reward. Now this helps us actually not only focus our giraffe and give you guys something funny to chuckle at, it also helps us with our basic health care. Because I'm pretty sure, just like you guys, no one around here has seen a giraffe actually physically go to the vets. I am still waiting for the one person in the crowd that tells me different in my nine years here. But yes, taking a giraffe to the vets is incredibly difficult. So we have the vets come out to us. And using this target training and a lot of this training, we can help make sure that these guys are as healthy as possible. You'll notice Nick has been able to move his giraffe up and down the platform. This way Nick can get a good look at all of its sides, can actually see if there's anything unusual with its walk by having it sort of walk backwards as well. Nick has been able to make sure that our giraffe has no sort of limbs or any kind of wounds as well. And of course Nick has already beat me to the punch by asking our giraffe to do the one thing that's really impressive, which is to scale. This way we're able to weigh our giraffe at least once a week. This way we can get a good average weight on our giraffes. Now our giraffe on the scale right now is 1,500 pounds. Nick, who do we have on our scale? Twiga. We have Twiga. Twiga is how old exactly? He's going to be four years old next Twiga is four years old and 1,500 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Twiga is still growing. He could potentially double that weight. He can also add an additional three to four feet. And as you can see, training is so much fun and successful that we even have other giraffe wanting to join in the training sessions as well. See, not just our ostrich enjoy this as well. But yes, by being able to weigh our giraffe on a regular basis, we can actually make sure that these guys are as healthy as possible. That they're eating as much food as they can. And in some cases, making sure some of our giraffe are not overly healthy like myself. But there's other cool things we can do, not just by showing off that impressive 18 inch long tongue right now. Just as that tongue's coming out, do you guys notice what color that tongue is? Blue. Gray, dark, blue, black, it's all those different colors. Does anyone want to have a guess why it's that color? I heard it. What a bird. Sunscreen, yes. These guys eat an average of 75 pounds of food every day. They eat 75 pounds of leaves every day. Can you imagine how much effort that takes? You're gonna have your tongue out for long periods of time. And just like here in the desert, Africa also has quite a hot climate as well. So that tongue will be out. If you're gonna be trying to find 75 pounds of food just using your tongue, you wanna wear sunscreen. So that dark color on their tongue is actually a naturally built in sunscreen. It helps protect the sun from any damage due to the sun. And of course, as you notice, you'll also notice that thick mucus coming off the tongue. Not only is Nick enjoying the grossness of that on his hands, yes, feel sorry for Nick, but not only that, it also protects them when they're eating some of our really thorny plants here at the Living Desert and as well as in Africa as well. That is another reason we want to keep up with that scale behavior as well. There are also particular members of our herd, and again, I ask you guys for the answer to this question. Why do you think we want to keep an eye on our female members of our herd, their weights? Pregnancy, yes. Believe it or not, this is one of the biggest ways we can tell if one of our females is pregnant. Ladies, mothers in particular, you always enjoy this little tidbit of information. That is because giraffe gestation is around about 15 months. Yeah, there's the sound of horror in the crowd. Yes, that's right. 
15 months. And the first indicator that we often get that our giraffe could be pregnant is the weight gain from the scale. Because we are weighing our giraffe on a very average basis, we understand there are fluctuations. And because of that, we are able to typically predict when our giraffe could be pregnant, especially if those weights suddenly shoot up. Then there is also another particular reason we want to do that as well. Because we don't actually physically see development until two thirds of the way through pregnancy. So this is the best bet we have to doing something like this. And plus, for some reason that I don't quite understand, our giraffe team will not stand behind a giraffe and do the pee stick test. I still don't understand what the reluctance. But yes, not only do we do things like this, you'll notice that Whitney is working on our elevated platform up there. You'll notice that it gives her a head height advantage. She's able to get a good look at those faces of our giraffe, see if there's any issues up there. But she's also able to work up there around that neck area. By being able to work around that neck area, we're able to do blood injections, take, remove, and use blood for any types of medical procedures or even for research purposes as well. And in the case of recently, a lot of our giraffe, Good. do we say about 50% of the Good. herd have been x-rayed by this point, or almost 80%? Um, almost. Four, four out of nine. Four, so four out of nine, so about 50%. 50% of our herd, using this elevated platform, has been able to be x-rayed. Just not for any particular medical reason, but for a constant checkup. A lot of the healthcare programs that we do here are preemptive. They are helping and planning for the future as well we're able to predict and hopefully have something for comparisons and changes. So this way we're putting a lot of effort into our medical and training programs here at the Living Desert. And I think you would all agree with me, not only do our giraffe team work incredibly hard making sure that nine giraffe go through this entire program every day, but also that they have some very good looking giraffe out there. I think we'd all agree at that, right? Yeah. You can say sexy, we don't judge you here. There's some sexy giraffe out there. And ladies and gentlemen, we want to do this every day to not only give them the best care possible, but for you guys to see how much that we care about them. Because, like I said, their numbers are declining. There are less than 100,000 giraffe left in the world. And since we have lost almost 50% in the last 30 years, it, our cry for helping these guys out is getting louder and louder. So here in the Living Desert, we've been trying to get that message out there. We've been trying to get that conservation message out there by just having you guys be aware of that. But also there's another particular reason as well. Just a quick show of hands. Who is it their first visit here today at the Living Desert? Excellent. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming today. Not only do we really appreciate that you guys are coming here, but we really hope that this is the first of many wonderful trips here to the Living Desert. But not just to you guys being first time visitors, but to all of you in the crowd. If you did not know, here at the Living Desert, we are a non-profit. That means that literally every time you walk through our gates and buy your tickets, or renew your membership, every time you buy some food or drink here at the Living Desert, or even every time you buy that really cute giraffe plush that you've always wanted, but you're gonna use your small child as an excuse to buy. <laughs> hey, it's Christmas, give a giraffe plush. Every time you are doing that, ladies and gentlemen, you are not only helping our fantastic giraffe herd, you are actually helping all of our conservation efforts. And as we approach next year, next year is our 50th anniversary here at the Living Desert. And in that 50 years, we have done so much great work with you guys, everything from conservation to also bringing awareness to many of these beautiful animals. In that 50 years of conservation, we have literally brought some species back from extinction. Not quite Jurassic Park style, but in an also equally impressive way. Species such as the Arabian Oryx, which were extinct in the wild back in the 70s, meaning there were no, none of those animals left in the wild. The only places you could find them were in zoos such as ourselves. As of today, because of your efforts and continual support here at the Living okay. Desert, there are now 15,000 of those guys back out there in the wild. Okay. Mexican wolf populations were almost down to single digits. As of today, there are now 200 of those guys just in the United States alone. And that is because of your guys' help. And if you're still doubting conservation and the power that you guys have, then I talk to all of you in the audience who call America home. 
And that is because not only am I incredibly handsome and modest, I am also a immigrant to this country and a great recipient of the American dream, something I can never thank you guys enough for. But there is an animal that shares that symbol, a symbol of this country, a symbol that also shares a similar haircut to my own. Can anyone tell me what that magnificent bird is? <laughs> There's always one comedian in the crowd. There's only room for one, and he's the one with the more, the ginger-like cut. Yes, the American bald eagle. Thank you so much, sir. But yes, the American bald eagle. Believe it or not, was heading towards extinction in the year 1917. As of today, it is one of the greatest success stories in conservation. Instead of going extinct in the year 2000, as it was predicted, it actually came off the endangered species list in the year 2000. That is an incredible testament to the power we all have because you guys changed policy. You changed government policy. You changed how you practice agriculture. You created the Endangered Species Act. And because of that, we have not only a great testament to conservation worldwide, but we also have a great testament to this country as well. So folks, if we can do something like that for an iconic animal of Af America, why can't we do it for an iconic animal of Africa as well? So ladies and gentlemen, I am gonna wrap up with our talk today in our chat, and I have one last question to ask you all. Did you guys enjoy your chat and training today? Yeah. Before you all start clapping, I'd like to ask you to hold your hoofs. One, because this is the giraffe training platform. We all have hoofs here. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't deserve the applause. I just get the chance to tell wonderful stories and present to you everything that goes on over here. The real heroes and the real winners today are actually both Whitney and Nick. Our giraffe care team who work hours, an incredible difficult job of making sure that our giraffe herd are well taken care of, but are also given the best training possible. And I think we all enjoy that training, right? Yeah. We all think our giraffe looks spectacular, right? Yep. So please let them know and please give them a big round of applause and a thank you as well. <laughs> All right, folks, there's so much going on throughout the day here today at the Living Desert. I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Not only that, if you guys do have questions, myself, Nick, and Whitney will be available to answer as many as we can. Thank you so much, folks, and please enjoy the rest of your day here at the Living Desert. Thank you. Thank you.